so 15 years ago, we had three people in the living room putting together a site. We have grown exponentially over that time, and we are at 70 million monthly active users right now. We have, we have seen incredible revenue growth and incredible growth both organically and through acquisitions, through doing a joint venture in Japan with Yahoo, through having partnerships with our business partners. And, it, and I'm giving you this context because I think it's, it sets a scene for where we are as a business, the growth that we have and the growth that we are looking to continue. So in terms of employees, uh, we have 1,000 employees. Uh, three or four years ago, we had less than half of that. We have these offices, and we have a very diverse set of employees. And that really gives you the context by which we have been looking at our reward and the journey that we've been on. We're an incredibly ambitious organization. Whatever your favorite book-selling website is, we want to be that and more. We want to continue to grow. We want to continue delivering the, uh, the features that our customers are asking for in more countries than we've ever been, more airlines than we've ever been, more hotels than we've ever had. So what does that mean in terms of employees and reward? Well, we need to scale. We need employees. You know, we are a, a people-heavy heavy organization. We need more employees in order to deliver those features to our customers faster than our competition and faster than we've ever done before. So we need, to we need to attract and retain. Corny, I know, but we need to attract and retain. Not only that, we also need to scale ourselves as well. We need to set ourselves up for having that number of employees in the future. So where we are, we, we had in at the end of 2016, we were acquired by Ch China's largest travel agency, a company called C-Trip, for over one million pounds. And we took some time then when we were done with all the stuff that comes with an acquisition. And we said, right, what do we need to do from a reward point of view? And where do we need to go on our journey? And that's a bit about what I want to talk about now. And I'm happy to ask, answer questions as we go if you want. So the first thing that we did was we looked at who we are at Skyscanner. We are 70% male. Our average age is 32, but we take on, this year we're taking on about 100 grads and interns. You know, we are 60% software engineering, but that's not all. But to echo what was talked about earlier today, you know, everybody is an individual. And there is a fundamental belief within Skyscanner that you bring your whole person to work. You don't set aside the having to go to sports day this afternoon or look after an ill parent or deal with whatever you're dealing with, all of you comes to work. And that's a fundamental belief at Skyscanner and that's underpinning everything that we do. And we're pretty ambitious as a reward squad as well. Um, and you'll hear agile terms through, so bear with me on that one. Um, you know, we set our goal of having online benefits platform in all countries by the end of 2018. We wanted to focus on wellness and we also wanted to look at our travel benefits. We're a tech company that helps people solve travel problems. Let's look at what we can do about travel. So we're gonna have a look at wellness. And one of the things that we, we, talk, to, we talk to our employees, uh, you know, we have a, a structure at, at Skyscanner which is one of our decision making. It's, it's customer first, then partners, then Skyscanner. And I know this sounds corny, but in the reward squad, our customer and in internal growth, which is what we call HR, our customers are our employees. And we'd like to listen to them. We like to talk to them. And right after the acquisition, we were talking to people and people were tired. Uh, I don't know if you've worked for that sort of startup mentality. Skyscanner was about 18 months away from an IPO or something big for five years. And that's tiring. And so what we did was we listened to people. And that's when we came up with the idea of an extended annual leave program. So we said, if you've been at Skyscanner for five years, you can have five weeks off. You can go rejuvenate, recuperate, spend time with your family, do all the stuff you've been meaning to, and come back refreshed, energized, and ready to go. And we also put something in for three-year service as well. And that's, so we publicize programs internally, we do announcements, people do blogs about all sorts of things internally. And that's how you publicize it. I believe the blog announcing this one still holds the record for the most number of likes across the organization. 
I'm quite proud of that. I want to keep it that way. Um, and it's not just liked by those who have got the five-year service. It's liked by everybody because they can see that and they, can, they have plans for what they're going to do with those five weeks or the three weeks. It started as pilot. We said we test it. Who knows if it's going to work? We didn't want everybody to go and then, and then leave the company. So we tested it. And a year later, so a couple of months ago, we decided that we would, we would keep it. And one of the reasons it's so embedded in the organization is that it's not, um, it's a 60 at the end of last year, 60% of those eligible for the five years had taken it. And that's not, you know, the people lower down the pay grade. Pay grade. As of this point in time, every member of the senior executive team who's eligible has taken it or are actually on, are on seal at the moment as well. We use Slack a lot. Somebody created the seal emoji that you get to use an awful lot as sort of people talk about time off and extended time off and debate, you know, extended parental leave, for example. So that was one of the things that we did that really helped people be become sort of refresh and rejuvenate. 100% of those people who went out said they came back, 90% of those actually said the workload was manageable. And that's one of the reasons we decided to keep it. Something else we did in terms of listening to people, um, in a tech sector space, there, is, you know, there are studies that look at sort of a fairly high index towards mental health issues. And so one of the things that we did was we said, oh, we'll pilot using a mindfulness app. Use Headspace and True BBC for Style. There are other apps out there. Um, we thought, well, we'll get 30 licenses. We'll open it up to people. We'll see what they say. We'll decide whether it, we think it will work for the organization. Um, we got 30 licenses. We got 192 people that wanted to participate in the pilot. <laughs> well, OK, we'll get a few more. Um, we decided on the basis of that pilot, we carry it on for a year. We give, we give employees subsidized. Uh, access to the site, they have to pay a little, they'll continue to get it. And at the end of the year, when again we said we'd look at it, if it's useful, 75% of the people that use it, use it at least once a week, and, and over 60% who use it say it helps their stress. Right? That's okay, that's a good step, and it, it works with our, the nature of our company. I don't think that's the only thing we can do, there's always more out there. But it's just a little step, uh, steps on the way in terms of our journey along here. We put in place a global EAP. We had some in some countries. I think everybody's probably got an EAP or are looking at it. Um, and, and one of the other th things to sort of to reinforce that, I'm not a facilities person, never will be, you never want me to be. Um, but one of the, the elements of the culture of organization and really shows how much that being an individual and bringing your whole self reflects throughout our organization. Every office has quiet rooms. Every office is built with the idea of having pods where if you need to get away from the open plan area, your squad room, that you have somewhere to go work quietly and then go back again. And given the, the you know, our high percentage of, of engineers, that, that actually rates really highly in, in what we're looking at. Love to take credit for it, can't do that. But I'll give you a context of the, great, of the sort of wider emphasis of the individual. So in terms of benefits, we got to 18 months ago and we were looking at our benefits. You know, we'd grown over predominantly the last six or seven years. We put benefits in as and when we needed to, when we started hiring people in different countries. We acquired companies, they came with benefits. And so we decided we'd stop and take a look. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with the benefits that we had. They were typical market practice. You know, they worked. Um, what we looked at in a bit more detail was, well, does that work for the industry in which we compete? So internet economy companies are notorious for innovating every, in every way, particularly in benefits. And so we looked and said, mm, I'm not sure it's, it's working particularly well. It's great, but I think we can do better. And I'm not going to surprise anybody by the concept of this diagram, ignore my really bad PowerPoint skills on this. What was happening was we had a reward squad that was 
getting questions in from Slack, from Jira, from people stopping them, from email. And we had a sort of management system where every, we were talking to every different provider individually. Yeah, this isn't going to surprise anybody. Everybody has been in that situation. You know, it sort of works when you've got 200 people. It's fine. When you've got 400 people and when you've got 600 people, you don't have enough time to stop and look and say, actually, we're spending all our time doing this. We can do, we can do a bit better. Uh, and our communications. So we, certainly in the UK, we had a new hire presentation once a month. You've probably seen it a million times. I might have used the phrase 20th century when I was talking to the people that um, the outside company that, that did it to us. Um, possibly. Uh, you know, we had an internet that's really difficult to search. We had a whole load of questions that if you knew where to look, it was great, but not knowing where to look is really difficult. Again, I'm sort of seeing smiles. I think a lot of people recognize this. Uh, and so we thought we can do something better. The, the other picture, and apologies if there's anybody from this pension company here, I just, this is my favorite picture because this is uh, Colin who's sitting up there. He received this number of letters individually posted and stamped from one provider for one day to tell us that they changed uh, the addresses of individuals on our scheme. There's a better way, right? <laughs> That's what technology is for, is to help us do this sort of stuff, right? So we thought there is a better way. So a year ago today, I think I'm right, uh, we signed a contract with Benefex. Three months and one week, and that week is very important, we went live with the UK site. One new pension provider, six new benefits, three change in, in providers, pretty good looking site, and no wrong data. Pretty sure, yeah. So uh, that was a pretty intensive three months. Um, but I will say that the journey that we're going on, that we're talking about, that I'm talking about here about benefits, we've also been doing the same thing with our comp, with our equity, with a lot of different infrastructure behind it. We've had, we have a real opportunity to look at the way that we do things and set ourselves up so that as we support the attraction of new employees, we can also scale us, we can also have a scalable structure. So in terms of what the site looked like, we, you know, communications at Skyscanner are very direct. Uh, we have all employee town halls every two weeks, and they are a ask anything structure. Uh, we have Slack channels that have you know, topics about all sorts of different things. So when we launched, we, we had TV screens, we had the online brochure, everything was web. Uh, we didn't print a thick, uh, I lie, we printed about six posters for each office. Everything else is online. The uh, Skyscanner is structured so that people can work from anywhere. Uh, and a lot of people work from home or work in different places. Video conferencing is intrinsic to the way that we do work. Uh, so we had a town, we decided to launch with a town hall. Um, Last benefits talk that we given, I don't know, six months, a year before, I think we got 10 people in the room. We were like, yeah, there's going to be about 10 people. It'll be fine. We had 100 people in the room, 200 people online. I think I'm right in saying it still holds the record for the most number of, UK, like, the most number of participants for a conference call that's UK specific. Um, we're like, oh, people are actually interested. It's not that, you know, people are actually interested in finding out what we're, de what we're doing about benefits. It, the... the questions that we had before wasn't, it wasn't a lack of interest, it was maybe they couldn't find things. So we were pretty happy about that. What we have, uh, I don't know, so 90% of employees access the site, we had 60%, roughly 60% of people submitting a benefit. Uh, we're going to go for more next time, um, always. But I think that was a pretty good say. I think we're going to go find the, those 10%. I, th I think at least 5% of those were on maternity leave and didn't have access to their emails. The other five, I'm still trying to find out who they are. Um, and it's not just uh, enrollment time. What we try and do is make sure that people are using it on an ongoing basis so that they are 
able to find out the answers to their questions about benefits at any point in time. They wake up at two in the morning and want to try and figure out how they increase their pension. They can go online. They don't have to wait till one of us wakes up and we can answer their question. Helpful for them, scalable for us. So the other tranche to the journey that we've been going on in the last 12 months, 18 months, is looking at travel benefits. And you know, we actually had a couple of really cool benefits you know, that were in existence because of you know, suggestions that came from employees. So we have this structure where, um, where people can go work from another office for a limited period of time. And that's great because it allows them a cheaper way to, or they don't have to use their holiday to go see another location. But at the same time, they're also building relationships with people in different offices. And we do a lot of work with different, between different offices. The other piece we have, and I don't know how many of you have lived in a country different to sort of where your family is, where your, where your home is. Travel at Christmas time in particular, really expensive. If you can go a week earlier, you can pay half the price. And that's what we do, right? We find low-cost airlines. Um, and so what was introduced was a home country working, which allows you, whether it's in the summer or Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving or anything that you want to, you can go and work from your home country for a limited period of time, which allows, which allows the ability to either take, you know, to use not your holiday to go and actually go see your friends and family or to not pay double the price of flying home at Christmas. So to add to that, uh, we, had, uh, we have these things called leaf of faith assumptions that, are, that, that Gareth has. And his concept last summer or his, that, that he, he put to the, to the company was that there's a, a lot of looking west for where technology innovation is. There's a lot looking to the Silicon Valley. His view is there's a lot that companies in China are doing that's really interesting, particularly in an app base. And he said, yeah, I have a leap of faith assumption that actually looking at China is where a lot of the future may be. And he wanted to put his money where his mouth was. Uh, so we introduced a benefit last October that's called the Discover China Incentive. Essentially, we said to employees, you can go to China, we'll pay a fair chunk of the money, uh, we'll, we'll pay, we'll pay uh, a, up to a limit, provided you come back with a product idea. And as, so we, this was for this year, as of a couple of days ago, we had about 45, 50 product ideas come in, and we know there's more coming, um, we, have a, we have a limit. And people are really thinking through those product ideas. I mean, reading them, and they're really interesting ideas. It's everything from you should buy this company to have you considered doing X and Y, because I had this real struggle when I was in China and I couldn't figure out X or Y. And they're really well thought through. And, and you know, a couple of them are actually in the backlog for a couple of squads to be doing some work on. Uh, really interesting. Of, I think it's really interesting, really interesting way of, of generating even more product ideas. So we sort of we had a look and said, okay, how well have we been doing? We set ourselves up with the goal of attracting and retaining people. We set ourselves up a goal of being able to scale. We got pretty good results in terms of listening to employees. There's a few things that didn't score as highly we need to work on. There's people that slack us, jeer at us, talk to us, say, you know what, you changed X provider. We really don't like them, um, and here's why. So, yeah, we're looking at that. Uh, we have, it's not quite NPS, but we have a very high proportion of people who, after the sort of launch of the UK, surveyed and said, actually, they'd recommend us. And I think that's a pretty good step in the way to being able to, you know, if people can talk in the pub, coffee shop, whatever, about the China Discover incentive, that really helps to position Skyscanner in a way that helps us scale. Oh, I had to show that. We're just quite happy for the recognition. Uh, so in terms of where we are as well, what we are looking to do, so we said we were going to launch online by, in every country by the end of 2018. We had UK last year. 
Spain went live in April, US went live in May, Bulgaria is next on our list in August, and then we have a slew of Singapore or the other countries. And, and, so w and as we go through those, what we are learning about the benefits, what we can do in terms of tidying up is great, but what we're really doing and what our goal is to try and make the benefits journey and the reward journey as easy for our employees as using Skyscanner is for our customers. And that's ultimately our goal. You know, if we need to use paper because legislation requires us, we will. Otherwise, there should be no paper involved. It, we don't use paper. It, it's sort of, for us, it's the equivalent of going into a high street travel agent, right? It's what we need to do and what we, we are in the process of doing is making the, the user experience in terms of benefits as close to the user experience that our customers have as, as much as possible. And I guess there's a couple of learnings, but I can stop if there's questions. Um, there's a couple of learnings that we had that, that somebody suggested I talked about. And one of them is you know, to, to, to some of the talks earlier. We work in a company where something can go from idea to prototype and out to customers in two weeks or less. And apologies if there's any insurers in the room, but that's not how insurers work. Um, and so we're sort of sitting in the middle of people saying three months, that's really quick. I don't know how you're going to do it. To three months, what is taking you so long? We could do it in two. Um, and so that was a really interesting learning of actually having to, to take a step back and do, do a bit of planning. Um, and the other one, and this is, I think this is a personal one, and I promise I, wrote, I was thinking about this before uh, some of the earlier talkers. One of, the, one of the structures within Expedia, uh, Expedia I've, I've worked for a lot of different companies, and one of the structures within Skyscanner, that Skyscanner pushes you to do more than any other company I've worked in, is the idea of testing. If you have a great idea, test it, work it, do it quickly, tweak it, piv pivot if it doesn't work. But the idea that actually getting out to employees and getting their feedback is so much more valued with the set of employees that we have than spending six months behind closed doors and coming up with a 64-page policy. So I think I've got a minute left, a minute and five seconds. Um, and thank you for listening, and thank you for not falling asleep too many times. Um, I just wanted to give you an idea of the journey that we've been on um, for the last 18 months, and, and it will continue because there is so much out there that we can do that can improve the employees, help us scale, and um, strive to get rid of all the paperwork that we can. So thank you.